Hey guys. Okay, so in this week's video, we're going to talk about easements because easements have been the bane of my existence this week. I don't know what it is at the moment, but I feel like every single day a new job is popping up or coming across my desk that has a major easement issue. I just It's just weird at the moment. Something's happening out there. Anyway, more specifically, what I want to talk about here is what do you need to consider and what do you need to look at before you start down the town planning process if you happen to have an easement on your property or not even the town planning process. If you're going to bypass town planning, what you need to consider before you go through the building approval process. So first and foremost, let's cover off the basics. What are easements? Quite simply, they're something that appears on a property, so it burdens a property to benefit another property. Now, or I shouldn't just say another property, another property or another person. Now, the most common forms of easements that I see within my role is probably four key ones. So first and foremost, access. So it is an easement over one property to allow a neighboring property to drive over their land, walk over their land, basically access their property through their land. Next most common one is probably services. So you might have a pipe, stormwater pipe typically, or a sewer pipe or something like that, and an easement over the top. The purpose of that easement is allow urban utilities or Brisbane City Council or whatever service provider, the ability to access your pipe or the property, the pipe within your property, let's work out what I'm trying to say here, the pipe within your property to maintain it, repair it if there's any damage, upgrade it, all of that sort of stuff. Next one we typically come across is probably a flooding easement. So when you have overland flow pass council will often ask to put a easement over the two percent AEP level and the purpose of that easement is quite simply to just be like guys no go zone do not come near this do not touch it do not put anything in here that's going to block the flow of water because they know that unfortunately mapped overland flow pass flood overlays tend to get missed in the conveyancing process not a lot of people know to do those flood overlay checks or town planning checks generally an easement you can't miss an easement on the title if your conveyancer misses an easement on the title they got issues. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a massive way of council just being like, alarm bells, alarm bells, do not come here in a way that can't be avoided or can't be missed. And then the fourth one is an encroachment easement. So areas, older areas like Paddington, Woolloongabba, those sort of areas, back in the day when they built houses, they didn't really put too much care and consideration into where the boundaries were and making sure they sat within their property boundary. They just turned up, went, yeah, that'll be right. Let's just whack it up there. As a result, there's a lot of houses in those areas, and areas like Shawncliffe as well, surprisingly, where eaves on the houses or window hoods are just across the property boundary. So they whack an easement over the encroaching portion to ensure that that encroachment can stay within the neighbor's property boundary and doesn't need to be removed or demolished, etc., etc. So yeah, they're probably the four most common easements that we come across, but there's a heap of other different ones like air and light easements, all of that sort of stuff. But yeah, the four ones I just mentioned are the most common ones I see. Now, what do you need to consider? What do you need to know? Well, when you're going to do an application on a property that has an easement, you need to dig in and find out what the terms and conditions of that easement are, because you want to make sure that you are going to adhere to those terms and conditions. So I'll give you a couple of examples here. If you're looking to subdivide a property and you want to continue to use the access easement for the new property, so the child, child properties, it's a parent property and the child properties. Just getting my terminology out. I need a coffee this morning. But yeah, you want to make sure that the subdivision or sorry, the easement terms allow all future owners and their guests and all of that sort of stuff to be able to drive through that easement. Or does the easement only benefit that first parent parcel? If it only benefits the parent parcel, you've got to go and change the easement documents to get the consent of the other parties to the easement to amend the easement documents to allow it to cover all future lots, etc., etc. So yeah, you kind of want to know that up front, whether you're going to be able to get access through there or not. And the reality is, unfortunately, a lot of the time, people don't necessarily like the idea of development popping up next door to them. So they may tend to, or not may tend to, they do tend to withhold consent or support to change those easement documents as a way of kind of trying to thwart your plans, make you fall over, make you not go ahead. You know what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, that's one example. Another example, so I've got this job at the moment, exact thing it came up this week. Basically, the client wants to extend their house into the easement. Now we look at the easement, it's a flood overlay easement, like it's there to allow for the passage of water to flow through. So yeah, you look at the terms and conditions, you're like, great, allow unimpeded flow of water or whatever it says, something along those terms. We're building a house up on stumps, water can flow through, no issues, happy days, like we're ticking that box. Then you dig a little bit further and it basically says you can't build within this easement without council's written consent from the land leasing or the appropriate section. Okay, yeah, so we get caught back to council to see whether they would consent to it, etc., etc. So there's so many situations where you basically got to go, okay, what do the rules, aka the terms and conditions, what do those rules for this specific easement allow us to do? Do we still tick all of those rules? Are we adhering to those conditions? 
or do we need to go and get the consent of the other parties to those easements, whether it's the neighbour or Brisbane City Council or Urban Utilities or whoever's actually involved here? Do we need to get their consent to change these things to allow us to do what we want to do? And yeah, like this, as I said, this will come up at the DA stage, or if you're not going through the DA, it will come up at the BA stage. And the reason why it comes, it's technically a BA question or situation, but it comes up at the DA stage because council's like, well, we kind of don't want to issue an approval that can't see its light of day at the end. Like we don't want to see issue an approval now and then have you come back around and go, oh, you wasted our time and money that was never going to get off the ground. Why did you take the money, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, they tend to ask it in the town planning stage. Final question I want to cover off is how do you find out this information? First port of call for me is always Queensland Globe. Now, YouTube video number 36, I checked it this morning, I'm pretty sure it was 36. Back in the early days of doing these videos, I talked about Queensland Globe and how to use that resource, it's a free resource, to be able to find easements on your property. It's accurate 95% of the time. Like I've found a couple of situations in my time where it hasn't quite identified or not quite, and just hasn't picked up easements that I know exist. So use it as an initial checking resource. So go there to see whether you do have an easement. At the end of the day, like I suggested before, your conveyancer should have picked this up at the time of purchase and alerted you to the fact that there was an easement on the property when you bought the property. So you should already be aware of that. And through that process, you should have the title search, which will tell you what the easement is and all that sort of stuff. But yet, yeah, once you know there is an easement on the property, you need to get a copy of the easement documents. The easement documents will spell out the terms and conditions, aka the rules that you need to adhere to. If you're lucky, it's a modern easement document and you can therefore, it uses modern language and you can interpret it. If you're really unlucky, like in those areas of Shawncliffe and Sandgate where they have the Dunny Lane sort of easements, oh my goodness, they are a pain to interpret. Trying to read that scribble handwriting, the old school um, handwriting. Oh, and the language they use, I look at it and just go, damn, I got no hope here. So yeah, if you're lucky, it's a new one. You can actually see the typewriting and all that sort of stuff. Check that you comply with it. And I think that's everything. Yeah, I think that's everything I want to talk about today. As I always like to say, until next time, thanks for watching. For all you red tape lovers out there, I have one thing to say. Well, no, actually, I've got three. Number one, the advice provided in these videos is general in nature. It's not site specific. You would be a silly billy to go and make financial decisions based on this advice without first checking with the town planner. Don't be a silly billy. Number two, Brisbane Town Planning is in no way linked to Brisbane City Council. The views expressed in these videos are my own, not council's. So if you don't like them, blame me, not council. Number three, what was my number three? Oh yeah, the views expressed in these videos are accurate at the time of recording. If you're watching this video back 10 years from now, the views may not be so accurate. That's all.